We are so glad to have you here as we talk about the open generation. We have been diving deep, focusing on today's teenagers and their attitudes towards Jesus, their views towards scripture, and now we want to talk about their, uh, their perspectives related to making an impact in the world, one of the defining characteristics of this emerging generation of teenagers. Um, this has been a labor of love. Um, we have been working with some incredible partners, Biblica, Alpha, World Vision, ACSI, Bible Study Fellowship, uh, Christian Vision, and Christ in Youth. And uh, not only are those organizations really great, uh, the people behind those organizations are incredible. And it's been uh, an honor for us to be able to listen to nearly 25,000 teenagers around the world, um, 16 different languages, 26 countries. You can see the sampling methodology here. Um, a really, really incredible study. Such an honor for us at Barna to be a part of it. Our biggest study ever. And um, I think there's such a, a, a great way for us as leaders to, to sort of stop talking and thinking about ourselves for a minute and actually listen in on what someone else is thinking. I think that's one of the great benefits of research uh, is that we actually get to, to listen in on what someone else might be thinking and perceiving about the world. So um, here we go. We want to talk about today's teenagers and their attitudes about, about Jesus, about the Bible, and about justice. If this is your first webinar, uh, you can go back and rewatch some of the other webinars we've done on Jesus and on the scriptures. Um, today we're going to be talking about impact and on justice. And our goal is to equip you, whether you're an educator or a pastor or a leader, uh, a, a parent, maybe you're even a teenager yourself and you're interested on what's on the minds of uh, your peers. And so here we are. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, uh, this whole project is divided into these three studies, these three different reports. Um, they're all meant to go together and kind of interconnect. Um, um, they're digital, and you can also get them in print. These are the covers of those. <clears throat> and the idea was to focus in on these three different topics that, that really relate to one another. Like, we believe that Jesus was, was, was died and crucified and was resurrected and is coming again. We build our lives on the authority of Scripture. And then it's not just so that we can have a great holy huddle, but so that we can make lives of impact, live lives of impact, go out there and make a difference because of our faith, because of what our faith compels us to do. And as a result, we have this kind of faith resilience. And we think all three of these topics are deeply interconnected. That's why we chose them and why we, we've sort of structured this whole study this way. Now, uh, again, we want to take a deep dive today on the perspectives related to impact, how teens around the world can make an impact and their attitudes on a wide range of topics that I think are so important to our current environment and our, our, our current conditions in the world. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to show you some of the things that most teens agree about. Um, there's a lot of things that in our society we find disagreement and uh, we're polarized and there's a lot of ex extremes, but when we look at the things that teenagers around the world agree on, we find a lot of common ground. So I'm hopeful for the world's future. 57% of all teens uh, say that's true of them. 11, only 11% 11 say they're not hopeful. 59% say they can make a positive impact in the world. Uh, only 7% say that they can't make a positive impact in the world. Um, look at the fact that Christians are even a little more likely uh, to say that's true. So the, the, the faith affiliation uh, seems to orient them towards that kind of impact in the world. Another widespread agreement here, 44% agree strongly and 43% agree somewhat that my generation has the ability to make a positive and meaningful impact on the world. Uh, another really cool finding. Um, today, how motivated are you to do something about injustices in society? And in our survey, we said by injustices, we are referring to the unfair or undeserved treatment of people. And again, you can see that nearly uh, four out of every five teenagers agree or agree somewhat with that, agree strongly or somewhat. And um, again, among Christians, it's about the same percentage. What's fascinating to me is that when we look and we kind of slice the data related to faith affiliation on many of these same kinds of ideas, we can look at conviction and commitment and other kinds of things related to serving others. I believe it is important to protect the well-being of all people. Uh, change, I believe it's important to change conditions that cause individual suffering. And you'll notice that, again, most teens around the world agree with those statements, um, especially Christian teens and other teens who have uh, faith other than Christianity, it's a little lower among those teens who have no faith affiliation uh, in terms of holding those two convictions. Now, what about confidence? Um, I'm confident that I can make a positive impact on others' lives, influence others to promote fairness and equality. Again, people of faith, teens who have a faith affiliation, whether Christian or otherwise, are a little more likely to believe that. It's actually those teens that do not have faith that are, are lacking in their confidence. 
And let's not forget that our scriptures give us lots of, lots of reasons to do that. I mean, this is just a small sample of the, the verses that relate to justice and serving the poor and, and the fatherless and the oppressed. Uh, Micah 6, 8, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly uh, with your God. And you can see, and there's many, many other examples of the scriptural guidance that we have to live lives of impact. Again, this idea that our beliefs in Jesus and our attitudes and, and uh, commitments to scripture lead us to the kinds of commitments that allow us to live lives of impact. It's not just that the church should be a holy huddle. It should be for preparing us for lives outside in the real world, especially on behalf of those who are most in need. This is something that the teenagers around the world that we talk to uh, tell us in no uncertain terms. They want to see the church active and alive and, 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 and busy and effective outside the walls of the church, not just a, not just a place for worship and sort of you know, the kind of the, the, the privatization of religion, but the, the activa activation of religion out in the world. So um, we, we took a, a really interesting look at this data, and we took these three different concepts of conviction and confidence and commitment, and you, we just kind of went through those different slides. I just showed those to you. Um, conviction included these two statements, just to refresh your memory. Confidence was positive impact on others' lives and influencing others to promote fairness and equality. And then commitment was uh, commitments about the future, and, and you can see them listed here. And then what we do with our, our uh, data and our amazing team of researchers is we create categories. We researchers love to nerd out. <laughs> we geek out on, uh, on creating categories. And so here's a new category for you. We actually created a, a group of teens called Justice Motivated, uh, and they actually hold conviction and confidence and commitment on all three of those areas. They had strong agreement around conviction and confidence and commitment. Those teens who were justice oriented, uh, middle category, they only affirmed one or two, and those that were neutral uh, were, uh, did not affirm any of those three commitments. Again, part of the reason I show you these statements is I know terms like justice and impact can uh, cause some consternation. We're just trying to help you understand this is what we took a picture of in our social research related to justice and impact. And so then we categorize people into being justice motivated, uh, and, and, and then they had agreement with those statements. So just so you can understand how it is that maybe in your context, you might want to measure their desire to make a difference or their desire to make an impact. And again, choose how you'd like to do that uh, based on, on your religious tradition, your theological tradition, the things that make sense for you. What we're here to tell you is that teens around the world, and we're almost certain the teens in your tradition and in your church, are interested in making a difference. They want to see their lives used on behalf of changing the trajectory of others' experiences in a good way. And so here's what this looks like across the whole globe. Um, you can see here in North America, um, uh, with, with in, in the context of the US, 25% are uh, justice motivated, 50% are justice oriented. Uh, and again, across these different contexts, you can see Central and South America and Africa very, very likely to be either justice motivated or at least justice oriented. Uh, in, in Europe, the, it's sort of the continent with the least orientation towards justice, uh, but still the vast majority of, uh, of young people in each of those contexts are either justice motivated or at least justice um, uh, oriented. Um, and then in Indonesia, uh, Korea, Malaysia, Taiwan, India, and the Philippines, kind of a wide spectrum of, of responses there. But when you look at this across the kind of the zoom out a bit, and you just notice that there is a, a huge contingent of young people across different faith groups, but even within Christian teens. In fact, they're more likely to be justice uh, motivated. Um, across all these different contexts, there's a huge percentage of teens who want to see change in the world, who want to serve others, who want to be activated for good. And, and our conclusion from this is that we as church leaders, as those who care about teenagers, should, should have this commitment. We have a chance to activate a generation uh, as we disciple them, part of the discipleship um, in their lives in Christ, in their commitments to Scripture, is about living their lives for others, to nurture their healthy impulses, to making a difference in their lives, a, a lasting difference, a sustainable difference, a real difference, and then provide outlets for their motivation to do that. Um, a few years ago, we did this study called uh, The Connected Generation, and we found that millennials, uh, 18 to 35-year-olds, were interested in the church, not just being a place for a sort of private worship, but for public expression of their, of their gifts and making a difference in the real world, in their workplaces, through their callings and vocations. 
through caring about c corruption and environmental change and all the things that I think matter uh, to this generation that they tell us in our surveys are so important to them. Uh, they want the church to be a laboratory for leadership, not just a place for private worship. And so as we think about that, um, I just want to close with this last scripture, which is, uh, which is found in Ezekiel. And we've been talking about this open generation. They're open to others. They're open to the needs of others. And I believe we as a church have an opportunity to open ourselves up to the kinds of things that this generation is asking of us. And uh, in that way, I think this is such an incredible scripture because it tells us that we should have open and tender hearts. Uh, God says, I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within, within them. I will take away their stony and stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart, maybe even an open heart. And uh, so they will be, obey my decrees and regulations, perhaps even in serving the least of these. And then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. I believe this generation is, is open. It represents some challenges because they're open to anything and everything, but it also represents a huge opportunity for us because I believe this generation is telling us that they want to see their lives make a difference. They want to be on mission with Jesus in the real world. And that is a great invitation that all of us as the church can embrace.